Hello, my name is Linda Grace, and I want to tell you about my story about the test study that I took place in. It was at Johns Hopkins back in 2008. I had gotten to the point with MS that I truly had tried everything they had to offer and nothing was working. And so I was looking at in-home health care and I had to, I had to have some help. My husband had to go to work, my kids had to go to school, and I needed somebody to take care of me. And I was desperate. And my mom got online and she found a test study that they were doing at Johns Hopkins. It was a test study that I was very anxious to take part in. And so she found the application, I filled it out, sent it in, called them, and I got in. And so on June 25th, my mom and stepdad flew me down. I was doing so poorly, I couldn't even walk to the, um, in the, to the seat on the airplane. And I learned that they really do take care of you on the airplanes. They took a skinny wheelchair and pushed me down the aisle on the plane, and I was able to hoist myself over into the chair, and that was the way they took care of me the whole time. My mom and Fred pushed me everywhere with the walker. They got us to a, an apartment that we were going to stay in, and then the next day we got in to see the doctors. And so they did the test studies that they needed to, to confirm everything. And then I got my, um, my shunt or Hickman put in so that they could put the, the drugs and test my blood and everything without having to stick a needle every time and like the next day. And then the day after that, I was admitted to the hospital and I started the, uh, the Cytoxin drug. And it was a, they counted everything by the days. So day one, I, I got four days of the drug. So on the third day was a day that it started to um, make it difficult to um, hold food down. And so I threw up, but I, I could hear in the background in the other rooms of the, in the cancer aisle of the, of the cancer, cancer ward of John Hopkins. I could hear people moaning and in so much pain and suffering and I wasn't feeling that way. I truly had a little bit of an upset stomach but it wasn't bad and I felt so badly for the other people that were doing, you know, um, going through much mm, more severe cancer treatments and with this one drug, the Cytoxin, I only, on the third day I remember I threw up. I couldn't keep food down but then I didn't feel sick. I just I just threw up and then then the next day I could slowly eat again. I had to go with real small foods, you know, the whole, just to keep it down. And then the fourth day, I, um, no, actually it was the fifth day, day five, then I was released from the hospital and I went back to the apartment. Dr. Brodsky had told me, don't expect to, as soon as you're done with the treatment, to get up and walk. I. He told me that, but I didn't believe it. I, I thought that as soon as I was done with the treatment, everything would be fine and I would get up and walk. But he was right, and I was wheeled out of the hospital, and then Mom and Fred took me back every day. I would have my blood tested, I would be um, given medications to reboot my immune system. I, I My mom worked very hard to keep the um, apartment clean and that we were so that we were germ-free, and and I and I never got sick. I didn't, you know, it was fine. We would wear the masks and make sure that um, everything around us was clean. And everybody else at Johns Hopkins was bald and <laughs> wearing masks. And and so on day about day 12, I started losing my hair, and. Then as it was coming off in handfuls, then my stepdad went ahead and shaved my head. So I was truly bald. And it didn't even bother anybody. I, it bothered me, of course, but my mom said she was so used to seeing everybody there at Johns Hopkins. You know, there's so many bald people that it really was okay. It didn't, it just didn't give her a hard time. And I'm so glad that it didn't because I really, that was the hardest thing for me about the whole experience <laughs> was losing my hair. So she took me down to the um, wig shop downstairs and we picked out a wig and and it looked pretty and I knew that I, you know by the time my hair grew back I was going to be sorry because I knew that my hair was going to grow back thin and fine 
and it did, <laughs> but while I had the wig, it was thick and beautiful <laughs> and very blonde. I really liked it. I just want to let you know that it was a very wonderful experience. Even though Dr. Brodsky told me that I wasn't going to walk right away, it did stop the progression of the disease. So I started um, exercising as soon as I could. Before we left, um, before we left Maryland, I was walking with my walker very slowly, but I could get in and out of bed and I could get into the restroom and, and, and I was slowly walking. And I came home and a few months of physical therapy um, with a typical MS experience of um, working as hard as I could and not seeing any results, it was very discouraging. So I ended up not doing a whole lot. And so it is what it is. And two years later, I am, I am where I am. And I'm still working, I'm still focusing, I'm still trying, and I still have hopes that I will one day be able to walk without the walker. But when I tell people that I'm not walking, because I, I'm using a walker, they say, no, Linda, you are walking. And it's the truth. I am walking. I'm just doing it with the walker. And so I um, found, um, Dr. Kerr mailed me a letter when he resigned from Johns Hopkins and he transferred over to another hospital. And so that I called, um, yesterday I called Johns Hopkins to find out if they were still doing this study anymore, if they're still um, doing this treatment. I found out that because Dr. Kerr isn't there anymore, they're not doing the test, they're not doing the study anymore, they're not doing the treatment. My MS is in remission and I'm not having any attacks. And so I can focus on relearning to walk. And so that's what I'm doing. So again, I will show you my progress the first of next month and we'll go from there. And I'll see you when you come back. Bye-bye.